back to the ADD workshop. So I gotta try and clean things up a bit around here. As you can see, that goes to the dump tomorrow. Not the truck, the appliances. Got a hood to finish. Got a truck to get going reliably. Things to fix on it. Garden tractor to finish. Rototiller to finish. The rototiller has an ignition problem. But just out of curiosity, in case you're interested, this uh, foreign built Asian big country, lots of people, uh, is a clone of a Honda. So, if you're stuck for parts, ignition parts specifically, go to Honda GX200. This is a Southland 196. So, this is a four drawer. Holds tools and bolts and stuff. I'm going to do a little reorganizing. Um, this is not great for the drill press. And I don't really have any other place that works well to store it and use it. So I'm not sure if this will work well or not, but I'm going to try it. I'm trying to make a three drawer cabinet. I haven't been able to find a used three drawer yet. So, I've taken an old four drawer that I had and I've cut it down and I'll show you. So hopefully I can get it low enough to fit under here. And that will help make room for the drill press as well. I can take this old engine analyzer until I get working on that project and then it can be stored over here. And that gives me my workbench back which I've cluttered with all sorts of stuff. And I have the bead roller there I like to use on this workbench. And I also have a sheet metal brake that I mount on that bench for use. So, over here is what used to be a four drawer. We bought a used two drawer for 20 bucks. So that holds all the carpentry tools power tools and screws and stuff and then some over some more over here and here so that gets them out of the way my wife's kiln um, we hoped to put it there but the stairs that have to come down can't clear it so it's gonna have to be closer to the window which means she's gonna have to reorganize that but that's her problem this is my problem so I've cut it yesterday with a zip disc. Cut the top off of it. I'm going to have to cut the sides and get that top back. The top fits over uh, steps on this sheet metal. And I don't really have a means to do that properly. so. I'm just going to cut it off and weld it on top here. And then I have to put casters on here. I'm not going to use these ones, but use some durable caster that's going to be mounted here. That way it can fit right underneath. So something of this size. Let's get a focus. Camera has gone out of focus. Got confused. Let's restart. So this caster, or one similar size, reverse it like that, you can see it's got some clearance. So if it's put in the proper place, I'm probably going to get one that takes four screws and mount it into here with machine screws and nuts. And that way, if I set it so that it can spin in the corner without getting locked on anything, then that should give me a cabinet that's movable, which I need. I have to clean underneath it and sometimes I want it out of the way. And that, instead of having that four inch high base that I've got on the other side, I'll be losing about three and a half inches, so that should work. Like that. On the inside. And then it's much shorter up top. I'll have to do my final measurements and see if I have to do something else as well, but 
I might have to raise the workbench an inch too, which is fine. I can just put uh, pieces of 4x4 four four underneath it and then screw them on. So, this is the next one. But just to show how you get these things apart, I cut it down to the level I want. And then I took the four and a half inch grinder and I just ground the rivet or the spot welds just to make the metal thinner. And then I used a chisel and a hammer. Crude, I know. <clears throat> Is this. Oh, this camera does have trouble with that background. Let's see if it can handle it now. So then I hit it with the hammer just to put an opening there slightly. Put in the chisel and banged it out. I can do these two if, to make it easier to get it all apart. And then this one, these corners I couldn't really get to very easily inside. So I just beat them with the hammer to get a gap right there and put in the chisel. The spot weld was there. So now I've just got one more weld each side to do and that's right in here at the front. And I can't get in there with the grinder either. I could use a die grinder and that would work but I'm just gonna beat it get that out of there. So I might have to do three first just to get it so I can get the back panel out and then I can collapse everything. So I will weld the top which is down there back onto this. I've changed it from four shelves to three and so I'll just grind the paint off and the metal that's flared from cutting it. And weld it back on. And then hopefully we'll have a three drawer shelf, file cabinet, put the tools in there and just take the bolts out of the other one and store them on a shelf that slides out. Reorganize the workshop, get a little more space in there. I thought I could just plop that top on there and tack it on but not so simple. To shim it for the door on the front so it's got clearance so the door can open and close and then I have to square it up so it sits at the front and then I've squared it with a square but making sure that this gap here stays the same with the square as it goes down. And so that should be it. Now I'll mark it all with a pencil and I have to put this piece back in. Make sure that uh, the drawers can open and close and lock so you can't open two drawers at once. And then I should tack it but I I'll start from the back on the outside. I was going to do the inside, but I just can't get there. So let's do that. The only gas type MIG wire I have is 25 thou, which is kind of thin for this. So I went up to 30, which is flux core, so it's going to make a bit of a mess. Now I'll clean up some of this stuff, but you can see I put it on wrong to start with. So now it's in the right position. It's tacked in all four corners. Now maybe I can weld it inside, which is really what I wanted to do to start with. Down in there. And around the back. Here's something to watch for if you're ever as dumb as me to do this. This short piece was up in the top. So that one is jammed. And when this comes up, there's no opening there. So you can't get the track in. So what I did, so I just got and broke it out. Okay, yeah, learning as I go. If you do cut these out, make sure it slides. If it doesn't slide, there's no safety lock. That sticks. I don't do that. Fix that a bit more. Anyway, it's the plate here that held everything in place. Take that out. And everything comes out. And then you got to put the small one in. So the big one can't go high enough. And then you end up with one with no safety lock. In here are the cam locks, you can see, safety, so that there's a, you can only have one drawer open at a time. See, it's like that, that's closed. So those can only, you can check them without the drawers in, it sh should be so that 
only one of them can turn at a time. So I did that, and this plastic piece up in here, where I put the top, I had to cut that three quarters of an inch off of that for the cam locks to work. And it's very important that they work, otherwise it can fall over. You see, that can't open, the bottom can't open, so I close that. checked all three of them now it's safe so I have to put the casters on the bottom and then it'll be done was it worth it eh, probably not but I'm going to use it it's a much better height for putting that engine analyzer on it and then I can get that off the bench clean this bench up move my metal working bench to the front and then put a six foot shelf in there and then get a, more space for the drill press that's the whole idea higher and deeper that's the way it works please don't forget to like share subscribe or even notify or any of the above or all of the above thank you